Yeah. I am Dr. Max Wachtel, and I'm a forensic psychologist. This spring. It's, um, it's an interesting experience to speak with somebody like that because it's, it's almost like um, they aren't even talking to you. You know, you could be having a conversation with them and they can be responding to you, but it doesn't feel like a normal conversation. It feels like there's this cloudy wall of glass between the two of you and, and you can just tell the other, the other person is kind of off in his own mind. And it sounds like maybe that's what was going on with, the, that is what's going on with him. You know, like when, when you talk with him, I'm, I'm sure that he recognizes you. you know, I, mean, I think he's a, 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 probably a pretty intelligent guy and, uh, you know, and he can pull it together when he needs to. Uh, but he just uh, gets so weird and uncomfortable in social situations and that's, that's just part of the disorder. I would say Tom's in his own head, sometimes his own world. Um, sometimes it's hard to make sense of exactly where he is or what he's speaking about. But um, one thing I tried to do when I was working with the homeless is kind of learn their story. Um, there's a lot more to the person than just the homeless stereotype. So good, bad, or indifferent, I wanted to know Tom's story. Um, I tried to delve into that and it's difficult, um, but I, I know a little bit of his family history, his mental illness history. So that helps with our conversation. Um, and I think those are things that the, the general public doesn't know about Tom um, and what makes them curious as to why he's still on the street, why he hasn't been pro provided any help. And the bottom line is Tom doesn't want it. He's been offered it and he just, he doesn't want it. It has to go beyond what, uh, you know, what he looks like, you know, because he, he looks like and I hate to say this, but he looks like the, the average homeless person. You know, the, uh, you know, he's got the long beard, he's kind of disheveled, he looks like he might be a little bit dirty. You know, like the, the, there's nothing really remarkable about the way that he looks. It's, um, I think it's the way that he behaves. Like he juggles in the park and kids love to see that. And, you know, and, and he's not uh, a scary, mean person. You know, that he may be paranoid and he may kind of push you away a little bit, um, you know, keep you at arm's distance. That, that becomes very interesting to people. Like, you know, why is he so different than uh, all the other people who we see on the street who may be talking to themselves and then, you know, as you walk by, they start shouting at you and they seem very scary. He, th this guy isn't scary. I found it hard to believe that you hadn't been to the vault actually earlier. Then again, why would you have to? All right. Four, three, two, one. Bam. That's the VO. Sports. This is video of, we well, hope, Tom Spear. We're really not too sure, but we're going back a few years, so I'm looking for sports tape 337. Sports 33. Oh my gosh, it's not here. It goes 336, missing, 338. Uh, the mystery of Tom Spear. How is that possible? 337. Ah, just out of, just out of order. It's here. Well, I would love to find video that we don't already have of Tom Spear playing foosball or maybe sound just anything. Anything related to Tom Spear would be great. Two, one, and 52 minutes, 28 seconds is video. Now, if this is video of Tom, well, we're gonna go to a, a beta deck and see if this stuff plays. This is all we got for light. Tom's in this one. Football champs, 53-48. There's Tom. But right. it's... Yeah. That was it. Oh, man. Time goes by very quickly, and everybody is busy. Um, you know, they have their own lives, their own families, their jobs. 
all of that. Uh, and you know, if there's somebody who is you know, turned into a, a problem in some way or who has developed some sort of a, of a disorder that, that has a really negative impact on social relationships and friendships, the, those people just kind of end up disappearing from your life. And, and it can feel like you just talked to them yesterday and then when you really go back and do the math, it's like, oh wait, I haven't talked to him since 1982. The homeless community kind of comes together, especially at night, for protection. And he's not one that would ever do that. He, he always kept to himself and he didn't hang around with any of the guys and didn't want to interact, didn't want to come in here um, for food or things like that. So that was kind of unusual. He said, I'm afraid that when I'm in here that my dad will send demons and I don't know how I'm gonna act if that happens and I don't wanna hurt you. And I, I told him, I said, you know, I really respect you telling me that, and I will find work for you outside. You know, then he said, can I give you a hug? And I said, of course, and, and so, and then he left.